What is going on guys welcome back in this video we're going to learn how to use Postgres or Postgres SQL or PostgreSQL in Python. So let us get right into it. Alright, so when we go to the Stack Overflow developer survey and we look at the most popular technologies, we can see that two relational databases are at the very top. We have MySQL and we have Postgres. And if we only go to professional developers, we can see even that Postgres is at the very top being the most popular uh, database technology, the most popular database amongst professional programmers, which means that it can be quite useful to learn about it so that you have at least a beginner level experience. Uh, and this is what we're going to learn about in this video. We're going to set up Postgres, we're going to connect to it with Python, and we're going to run some basic statements so that you see how you can interact with that database using Python. Um, so what we want to do first is we want to go to postgresql.org. You want to click then on this download button. You want to click on your respective operating system, in my case, Windows now. Uh, and then you want to just download the installer up here. So you click on this link and then you can choose a version. I just always take the most recent one. So 15.2 as of right now. And then again, you choose your operating system. Uh, in my case, this one, I download the file, I save it on a desktop or in the downloads folder, wherever you want. Uh, and once this installer is downloaded, you can just click on it. It's going to start. Um, and in my case, I already have it installed. So I'm not going to click until the end because then it would just replace my current installation. But what you want to do is you want to click on next. You want to select all these components. You want to click on next again. In my case, now it says existing inst installation has to replace everything. So I'm not going to do it. In your case, it's going to ask you for uh, username or I think not username, just password for the admin account. It's going to ask you for the locale and stuff like that. Very simple stuff. Just pick your country, your language, uh, just pick a password and then continue with the installation. It's not too complicated. Uh, and in the end, it's going to probably ask you some things about the stack builder. In my case, I just skipped this installation. You can also uh, follow through with it. I just installed the server and that's it. The important thing is that you also have PG admin for install because this is the tool that we're going to use to uh, set up everything to to also monitor everything while we're connecting with Python. So once you have all this installed, what you want to do is you want to run PG admin, you just open up your start menu, you type PG, and then you see here PG admin for this is basically the tool that we use to connect to the Postgres database. And this also usually starts the database unless of course, the service cannot be started. Now, in your case, when you run this for the first time, it's going to ask you for a master password that you have to set. In my case, it asked me to enter the already existing master password. I chose a very complex one, one, two, three, four. And then when you click on servers up here, um, it's going to ask you again for the Postgres user for the database. So here again, I have a very complex password, one, two, three, four. Um, and then once you're logged in, you're going to see here the databases. Now, Chances are this is not going to work as flawlessly as uh, it seems here. Chances are the service is not going to start. Chances are you're going to get some exceptions here. So if you get the problem that you cannot connect to the server because the service isn't running or because you get this error message that um, Postgres isn't running, what you can do is you can right click here, open the task manager, you can go to services, you can scroll down here to where is it Postgres, this service here, you can right click it and start it. Now chances are it's not going to start because of some problems. If you get this problem that you cannot start the service, it automatically crashes, you open services down here, you scroll down again to that service to this Postgres service, you right click it, you go to properties, you go to log on and you change from this account here to local system account and you allow service to interact with desktop, you save this, you then right click again and you start then it should work. Now, if you get any other problems, um, you will have to Google because this is the problem I encountered. I'm not sure what kind of problems you can encounter in addition to that. But this is the one I encountered. And this is how I fixed it. Once the server is running, you can just connect. Um, you can just connect to the database. Uh, and that's it. So this is what we have here. This is the Postgres database. Down here, we have uh, schemas, we can open this up. And here we would find also the tables down here. Now we don't have any tables yet. Uh, but this is where we're going to see our tables. And we can, of course, also just right click on a database, open a query tool. And with this software now do some query. But we want to do it in Python. So we're going to install a Python package, we're going to connect to the service, and we're going to run the Python code 
um, for the database operations. And the package that we want to use here is called uh, PG. I think this is how it's pronounced. Pip install. It's PSI COPG, probably for Postgres, and then two. This is the package that we want to install today. And once the package is installed, we can open up the development environment of our choice. We can create a new file, main.py. We can then import this package by saying import sci copg2. And then we're going to just connect to the database in a very similar way to SQLite 3. So those of you guys who have already worked with SQLite 3, um, it's very, uh, very similar. The functions are basically the same or the methods. Uh, so what we do first here is we start a connection object by saying sci or whatever the package is called dot connect. And now we provide a couple of uh, keyword parameters, keyword arguments. First of all, the host of our database is localhost. Now, if you want to connect to a remote database, obviously you have to provide the, the host that this database is running on. The host that it's running on on your system is the following. You just right click on this uh, Postgres 15 thing and you click on properties. You go to connection and here you can see it's localhost, it's port 5432 and it's username Postgres. So this is what you need to connect. This is what we're going to enter here now. Host is localhost. The DB name, the database name is uh, is Postgres. This is the name that we see here. This is the database. Um, the user is going to also be Postgres. The password in my case is 1234, whatever you set this to. Uh, and the port is just 5432, which I think is the default. So this is actually an optional parameter here to pass. Now, from this connection, similar to SQLite 3, you also want to get a cursor by saying cursor equals connection dot cursor. And this is what we use then to actually execute the commands. So we do something here, some database stuff. In the end, what we want to do is in order to whatever we did here, whatever statements we executed, in order to commit them to the actual database, what we do is we say connection dot commit. And then what we want to do in the end is we want to close the cursor and we want to close the connection. And everything else is going to be done in between. So here we're going to do the actual database work, you could say. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to execute a simple statement. I like to use multi line strings for um, SQL statements. And we're going to just say here, create table if not exists. And if it doesn't recognize here that I'm writing SQL code, I'm just going to press Alt Enter here in PyCharm. I'm going to inject a language or reference and I'm going to scroll down here uh, to Postgres. And then it's going to recognize the syntax here in this string. Uh, so create table if not exists, I think with an S, right? person and we're going to just provide a simple person definition here. So we're going to say ID is an integer um, and a primary key name is going to be a var chart 255. Age is going to be an integer and then gender is going to be a character. That's basically it. That is our statement. So if I just run this Python code now, if I just run this file, you can see nothing happens here in the command line. But if I go into the database here, I open up the tables. Um, maybe I need to refresh. There you go. We have the person table and I can actually right click here and use the query tool to now say select everything. Maybe I can zoom in as well. No, it doesn't seem like that. But select everything from person. I can just run this here and you can see we have ID, name, age, gender. So this worked. Um, and now, of course, with that table, we can also insert some data. We can select some data. So let's go ahead now and say cursor dot execute. We want to execute the following statement, insert into person values. And here we first need to define what we're actually inserting. So we're going to say ID, name, age and gender. And the values are, are going to be the following. We're just going to say here one Mike uh, 30 male. And we're going to copy this a couple of times. We're going to change this to two, three, four, five. 
we're going to change Mike to Lisa, we're going to change this here to John, we're going to change this here to Bob, we're going to change this here to Julie. And the ages are going to be 30, 30, 54, 80, and 40. And then we're going to obviously say female here and female here. There you go. And now before we run this, because then I would have to delete the database, or maybe let's do that so I can show you how to delete the database um, or the table, sorry, not the database. If I run this now, uh, we still see nothing here, but if I go now into Postgres and I rerun that statement by pressing F5, you can see we now have these entries here. And I can also just go ahead and uh, right click this table and say delete drop. And then it's going to ask me, are you sure you want to delete or drop the table? Yes. And now the table does no longer exist. If I run this statement, we cannot see this table. So I can rerun the script. Now, if I don't do that, if I just run the script again, it's going to tell me that I already have this primary key in there. So it's not going to allow me to do the same thing again. Uh, and because of that, we want to drop this table before you run the code again, or at least you want to truncate the table. So at least you want to delete all the entries. All right, um, so that's that. Let's go ahead now and select some values. So we can say something like um, cursor.execute and want to have a simple select everything from person where age is less than 50, for example. That is our statement. And this is going to return multiple values. So maybe actually let's go ahead and first do something where we only get one value. So let's say where name equals Bob. And then we're going to just say print cursor fetch one cursor fetch one is just going to give us one uh, result. So this is going to be a single instance. If I run this now, you can see here we get four Bob ATM. Those are the values for Bob. Um, and we can also do something else. We can also say cursor execute select everything from person where age is less than 50. And this is going to give us more than one result. So we can either do print cursor fetch all. This is going to give us a, uh, a collection, a list of tuples, or we can just say four tuples, so four row in cursor dot fetch all we can print individual rows. That's also a possibility. Now, in order to be able to run all of this, we need to again delete the table uh, or drop the table. This usually you would make this part of the Python script up here. You would say drop table or truncate table or something like that. But we're going to do it now just like this. You can see we get Bob first and then we get one, two, five for the second query, Mike, Lisa, Julie, all below the age of 50. Now, the last thing I want to show you here is something not necessarily similar to prepared statements because this library here does not offer any built in methods for prepared statements. We cannot really uh, do that here like we could do that in uh, SQLite 3. Uh, but we can use a function called Mogrify to basically format in multiple values. And it's not exactly the same, uh, but it works kind of the same way. So I don't think it's as secure, but we can do something like the following. We can say um, SQL equals and then cursor mogrify. And we can say, for example, here, select everything from person where and now we have two things. We want to say name equals um, or maybe let's do even something more complicated. Let's say we want to have a name that starts with a certain letter. So let's say we want to have uh, the letter J, John and Julie but we only want to have those that are below the age of 50. So we can say here where start underscore or starts underscore with and you want to pass the name and a certain string. So percent s to let uh, to then later on fill it in. Um, and we want to say that the age has to be below percent s. So another thing that we're going to um, to format in here. And we just pass now here J as a character and 50 as an integer value. So this is the full query here. Um, and we can first of all, only print the SQL statement if we want to. And then later on, we can also just say cursor dot execute SQL. And then we can of course say print cursor fetch all. 
In this case, it's going to be just one entry, but we can still do fetch all. So let's one more time delete the table. This is going to be the last time, I think. And then let's run this again. And you can see here, this is the actual query. We have select everything from person where it starts with name J and H less than 50. You can see 50 is not a string, even though we use percent %s. Uh, and J is a character or a string, um, even though we use the same placeholder. Uh, and that is the result set. You can see the difference between fetch one and fetch all is that we get still one entry, but we get this in a list because it assumes that there are multiple entries. Uh, and here we just get one entry. And this is how you use Postgres in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.